YouTube's crackdown is a symptom of the latest globally sanctioned lie centered on gender ideology, Owen said. Previous cases of narrative driving falsehood centered around Black Lives Matter movement and COVID, but gender ideology is particularly insidious because it targets children, Owens added. They all can't stop themselves, too, eh? It's like, hey, whoa, what? They're saying I'm doing hate speech. All I was saying was that the queers are all what I, what's the problem there? Why is, why is that offensive? Why are you offended by that? Candace Owens has been suspended from YouTube over videos about trans issues. Did you think it was going to be easy? With all the culture war victories we've had over the past couple of months, I see cause for hope and optimism. In fact, it looks like the tide's turning rather dramatically. If you've not been following the Call of Duty scandal involving Nick Merckx, Tim the Tatman, and Dr. Disrespect, well, then you may not be aware that tremendous victory lies ahead and is happening right now. Those individuals I mentioned, they're video game streamers, so they're reaching younger audience. They're very famous with millions and millions of followers, and they're upset over, let's just keep it simple, they're pushing back on a lot of this stuff that targets kids. But of course, we have an election coming up. And do you think the powers that be will sit idly by as regular people say, Oh, Ron no. said no homo. Oh, okay, well, then it's They're not okay. going to. So, of course, Candace Owens has been suspended. Of course, we know that other Daily Wire hosts have been targeted. Jordan Peterson had a video removed. And co-CEO Jeremy Boring has... By the way, you know what's wild about Jordan Peterson having a video removed? It's like, you got away with so much, motherfucker. You're complaining about this now? God, how could they censor me? 1985 is happening. Mother's brush. And it's like, motherfucker, you were obsessed with Elliot Page's abs. You were talking about him misgendering him, going off about how sexy his abs are and shit. Then being like, oh, Caesar, 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 too many pronouns. Like, Jordan, I know, I know, I know that you're deeply upset that you got one video censored, probably for fucking, I don't know what it took. I, I like, with YouTube, I never know what it takes. Uh, it, it seems like a lot of these motherfuckers can get away with so much shit. Matt Walsh, for so fucking long, I grow so weary of all the Matt Walsh shit where he would be like, hey, everybody, here's a hospital. Hey, everybody, here's the phone numbers of all the people who work at the hospital and their email addresses. Here's the address of the hospital again, if in case anyone wants to find it. Here's the phone numbers. Suddenly they get a whole bunch of bomb threats and death threats. And all these doctors, nurses are like, hey, we're getting an inordinate amount of death threats. And it's all coming from a variety of different places. Who's to say where it came from? Was it Matt Walsh or was it Michael Knowles? Was it Michael Knowles or was it Libs of TikTok? Was it Libs of TikTok or was it Tucker Carlson? You can't point towards anyone, any single one of them. They all get away with it. Yep, that Andy No, you know, that little scamp is just running around doing all the heavy lifting for the Adam Waffen and everyone has to sit back and be like, yeah, so right-wing extremism, what a thing. Uh, so I thought YouTube was just gonna sit back idly and it seems like since Pride kicked off, YouTube has suddenly started to get a lot of the pressure. Uh, I don't know if it's being applied properly. I don't know why. Uh, I know that, you know, Tim is talking about how you're gonna have major victories. If he's talking about Activision, Yes, Activision is most likely going to. I, I, I'm, I'm surprised they haven't broken yet. I, when as soon as I saw Activision did what they did, and I knew I could see the writing on the wall. I'm like, oh, all these pro gamers are going to come after, uh, in, in support of solidarity of Nick Merckx. Everyone who disputes it is going to be like, what? Do you think this is a controversial statement? Uh, is it controversial to say leave kids alone? What are you, a pedophile? Just like the right wants. This is why they do this. This is why they frame this entire way. This same Nick Merckx, by the way, who said that Ron DeSantis is the goat. Um, so like, yeah, I think his views are pretty fucking clear. He even he explained it afterwards. He was like, yeah, I mean, I don't have hate in my heart. I just want to be the one to teach my kids these things, you know? It's nice it's to see they're doing something. About YouTube putting their fingers on the scales. Of course they... It's almost like Dr. Disrespect and XQC have always been pieces of shit. Exactly. Exactly. They are. YouTube suspending channels like Candace Owens, demonetizing any commentator over this issue is specifically intended to help sway the election. End of story. I've got photos that I can show you from Pride that would make you very, very angry. You may have seen many of them. There was one viral video. Ooh, photos, viral videos, things. I can show you a fucking plethora of right-wing groomers. Yes, groomers, actual groomers. People are actual 
predators towards children who happen to be right-wing politicians, right-wing pundits, right-wing fucking TV hosts, right-wing political figures, you name it, a lot of right-wingers seem to be actual fucking groomers or say that fucking grooming is totally fine if it happens to be a woman who's the pedophile. If it's a woman who's an offender, well, then she's just a dream maker, according to Tucker Carlson and every other fucking right-winger under the sun, Greg Gutfeld. We see you. Um, so that's that, that's pretty fucked up. Do you have some photos of some wild shit? Did, did you get the 4chan thread going? Did, did you pull, pull up that thread and it says, like, hey, look what they're doing. You made this happen. Make sure you say that over and over. You made this happen here. Look, it's a couple of people in dog costumes, not from a pride event, but it looks like it's a pride event and they're talking to a little girl. Isn't that scary? Make sure you say you let this happen. Say it over and over and over. You let this happen. Make sure everyone knows. Yeah, okay. Scary photos. I was there. I sat in the room. I was in the circle. I sat across from fucking Tim Pool and Moon Lord and I, I saw the pictures that they were always showing you. Some of them, by the way, I have no idea of actually verifying whether or not like this video footage just showing you happens to be an actual fucking um, like a uh, pride event or if it's just like a teacher at a school district who is being very inappropriate like who is going to sit there as you show video footage inside a gymnasium of some teacher giving the kid a lap dance and be like well no I, I defend this I, I, I defend these no I don't defend this but this isn't fucking pride this isn't drag queen story hour I have no idea what the fuck this is I have zero context you're just showing me footage of a fucking teacher giving a lap dance my reference point would probably be Tucker Carlson has said that's okay he seems to be okay with the fact that a teacher would give a lap dance to a student. I'm not. I'm not okay with that. I don't think teachers should give lap dances to students. What does this have to do with fucking pride? Like, none of this have an, oh, you, you got some photos, some risky pictures you, you want to show the world? Adult men perform a sex act on each other in public in front of children. Now, look. That was you know, uh, Stephen Crowder. I'm a traditionally liberal guy. Not that it means much these days. And what that means is, look, man. People love each other. They want to live their lives. I'm always more just like, do your thing. Just leave the kids out of it, right? And now we're at this point where they're not leaving kids out of it. They're explicitly targeting kids. And I think there's a good portion of the powers that be at YouTube that are into children that have that. that <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. They're going to get fucked at some point. I, I was like, I kind of see the writing on the wall. Tim Cool has called every single person who works at Activision a pedophile and a groomer like at a certain point someone's gonna sue his ass tim heidecker already before before he left twitter forever because tim heidecker deleted his account he's like did i sue tim pool for calling me a groomer without any justification whatsoever like he's so liberal with this now they all feel like they've been given a pass because of you know free speech man come to twitter aka elon musk turned it into the white supremacist platform so it's like okay yeah you did it you did turn it into the nazi platform it, exactly as everyone predicted it is rife with fucking nazis nazis run the show actual neo-nazi accounts have verified blue check marks you did it Le epic memes you flipped it on its head twitter's a nazi site now okay so by the by tim <laughs> you gonna say anything you gonna speak out <laughs> disgusting predilection and they're seeking to protect it by all me uh, at, at any cost we watched tucker carlson do the same thing towards instagram yesterday tucker carlson was going off about instagram and just being all like oh well uh, apparently according to their uh, own uh, chief of uh, fucking head of security uh, they're completely fine uh, with uh, you know pedophilia, uh, pedophilia and, and and like you know uh, groomers on their platform not true and many of them just know that it's a major weakness for the left in the culture war and they're going to have to do whatever they can to silence anyone who would expose them I'd like to mention one simple thing to all the naysayers as we begin this segment the discussing naysayers. the work of Candace Owens. You know, it's funny. There were these people who believed that uh, powerful individuals around the world. It looks like Twitter is no longer listed as a member of the At Tech Coalition, an alliance of big tech companies working to prevent child sexual, child sexual exploitation online. The last time I'm seeing Twitter's logo on the website is March. Hmm. Sure, it was just a, uh, a cost-cutting measure at the end of the day. ...were trafficking minors for nefarious reasons. Uh, and they were into, the, into them. If you don't <laughs> Wait, sorry, Tim, what are the good reasons for trafficking minors? <laughs> what are the positive trafficking minor reasons? Can you lay those out for us? I, I have yet to hear them. I haven't heard this argument made before, so I'm just, I'm slightly curious. What is, what is the positive use? <laughs> ah, for nefarious reasons, you see. Not the good kind. You know what I mean? I try to keep it family friendly a little bit. But there was a conspiracy that powerful global elites were trafficking kids and stuff. Wow. And uh, the media said you were fake news over and over and over again. You're a liar. You're fake news. You made it up. And uh, then Epstein got arrested and Ghislaine Maxwell is currently in jail.
Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The media was never denying in that respect that uh, Jeffrey Epstein could be at the very helm of a massive pedophile ring. In fact, that was media fucking currency. It printed them fucking cash. Holy fuck did they report on that. The stories that were considered fake that the media didn't want to report on, so to speak, were the lies like Wayfair cabinets, QAnon, that there was this liberal cabal of super elites that were drinking adrenochrome with children. Yeah, that all turned out to be absolute fucking quackery. And bullshit. So yeah, the media didn't report on that one. But Epstein, are you fucking kidding me? Did was the media silent on Epstein? Oh, the media blackout on Epstein was pretty intense, eh? Until it wasn't. <laughs> like, what are you saying, Tim? That's objectively false. <laughs> Why? Because they have a powerful client list of wealthy global individuals, uh, international powerful elites. Yes. Who were yes. Goddamn. Yes, they're called billionaires. Billionaires. Uh, that was a very common theme. Billionaires, people in power, celebrities, rich people, powerful people, people with very powerful positions of power. Yes, a lot of them. The, the list was large and long and, and it encompasses lots of different political ideologies, lots of different fucking specializations. Academics are fucking in that list. Everyone from Richard Dawkins to Steven Pinker. It's a very very big ass fucking collection of pedos leftists like noam chomsky all the way to fascists like donald trump were all fucking a part of that it's disgusting it's deplorable but it's not a conspiracy in the way you're making it out to be it's not as if the global elites are secretly controlling this very secret co like collection of people that no one knows no one's even heard of trafficking minors if you know what i mean Is that conspiracy theory? <laughs> well i do because there's only one meaning to it <laughs> or, or, or do you mean the other tra kind of trafficking of minors, if you know what I mean? Huh, how about that? They lied about it. The media lied about it. Mm. Here's what I think. I think there's a lot of people who are aligned with the left who absolutely are uh, groomers and pedos. Mm. And we can see that with the Epstein stuff, right? Po and, and, and those aren't so much the left as they, they are prominent global individuals, but the left oh. aligns with oh, okay. the neoliberal, neoconservative, corporate hegemony. Those are two very different things. Are, are you saying both we align with neoliberals and neoconservatives? Because we could. There can be neoliberals who are also neoconservatives and vice versa. Uh, but I, I don't think that's what you're implying. And, and, and overwhelmingly, no. No, like I said, one of the most prominent ones you could point towards is probably Noam Chomsky. That's probably one of the biggest ones on that list. Otherwise, like not even Richard Dawkins is someone I would consider to be a fucking a, a liberal in, in the purest of senses. A lot of the people were, again, billionaires, which usually skewed to be uh, center right uh, as right wing uh, often. But like if we were to look at the political alignment of a lot of the people in the black book, especially the actual list, the Epstein list, no, it did not skew left by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, the leftists would be a minority of people who were represented there again if you want to you can just check out the list of right-wing groomers right either you can look at the article that media matters just put out today or i've put a collection of them up on twitter uh there's a vast collection of right-wing political figures right-wing pundits fucking media personalities pol politicians you name it a lot of groomers a lot of pedophiles a lot of groomers a lot of people in the closet a lot of people who are massive hypocrites a lot of people who are actually closet homosexuals a lot of people who are closet bisexuals a lot of people who are fucking deeply deeply unhappy i mean the common theme is they all have a very unhealthy sexual relationship with them with the, with their own sexuality and their own sexual selves that's 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 kind of the theme lockheed martin marching or uh, marching around with with pride flags we get it i think for many of the political elites they're just thinking we will take whatever we can get so when it comes to someone like candace owen saying hey it's a bad thing they're like look we don't care about it we just want to win and that's where we're heading right now i do see cause for optimism especially with the call of duty activision scandal more boycotts, Bud Light tanking. I went to a local liquor store this past weekend. We had a little bonfire. And I asked, I was like, how's Bud Light doing? The guy was like, we can't sell any of it. And he was laughing. And I was like, do that many people know about what's going on? And it's like, they don't know too much, but they know enough. And uh, I find it very fascinating. Here's the news in the Daily Wire. Candace Owens reveals globally sanctioned lie that led to YouTube suspension. They say Daily Wire podcast host Candace Owens announced on Sunday that YouTube suspended her account because of her commentary about transgender issues. In an Instagram video, Owens said YouTube imposed a temporary ban on her channel and said the lockdown was a result of a review of videos in which she refers to trans identifying people by their biological sex and showcases people who have expressed remorse over undergoing transgender surgeries. Owens blamed YouTube's very opaque policies for multiple strikes against her account and noted a suspension could last a week or more. 
YouTube's crackdown is a symptom of the latest globally sanctioned lie centered on gender ideology, Owen said. Previous cases of narrative driving falsehood centered around Black Lives Matter movement and COVID, but gender ideology is particularly insidious because it targets children, Owens added. They all can't stop themselves too, eh? It's like, hey, whoa, what? They're saying I'm doing hate speech. All I was saying was that the queers are all pedophiles. Was I, what's the problem there? Why is, why is that offensive? Why are you offended by that? Are you too a pedophile? A post Owens made to Twitter summarized what she talked about on Instagram. So I will pull this. Man, Tim looks really worn down and tired. Good to see you, Merrick. How you doing? I want to go check out Merrick's channel. Uh, yeah, he does. He does. He's still fucking angry as fuck, though. God damn, that doesn't slow down. This one up. The beanie, the beanie poisons the mind and therein transfers the anger and hatred. Interesting. Let's let's read this long Twitter post from Candace Owens to break down what it is she's arguing. Let us not. Let's move on to the Michael Knowles thing. Jeremy Boring. Over the last few months, Daily Wires received 200 violations from YouTube across our accounts from Matt Walsh Blog, Ben Shapiro, Real Candace Owens, Michael Knowles, Jordan B. Peterson. Okay. All right. You know what? I want to put this up on screen. I want to issue a formal fucking thank you. Finally. Fucking finally. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I have been complaining about this for so fucking long. YouTube is not a safe place for fucking queer folk. It is not a safe place for LGBTQ plus folk. It is a cesspit of fucking bigots. And the shit that Matt Walsh gets away with and gets to amplify on the platform on a regular fucking basis, like you have to look towards all the violence that was happening. The real world violence towards people like the Boston Children's Hospital, a kid's hospital where fucking kids need life-saving surgery, life-saving fucking medical attention, that kind of shit. Uh, all of a sudden, Matt Walsh starts putting that place on blast, starts putting the doctor's the nurses, everyone on blast, and yes, lo and behold, boom, there's death threats, bomb threats, fucking bomb threats called into there multiple times, multiple bomb threats. Um, how far does this have to go? I kept asking myself. How much do they need to do? If you look and listen to the actual YouTube TOS uh, when it comes to hate speech for marginalized groups, they are violating almost all of the rules, all of the rules. They lay them out clearly in that cute little video, and we watch the video on stream just to make sure that we're totally on base with this, and holy fuck, do they ever violate those rules on a regular basis. Rules for hate speech, rules for fucking dehumanization, because it was just a non-stop fucking dehumanization of these groups and consistently trying to refer to them as subhuman, as fucking uh, the, the same experiments that the Nazis were doing. Like, that was real words that were coming out of Jordan Peterson's mouth. No repercussions, nothing. So to see this list where it's like, real Daily Wire, uh, Matt Walsh blog, Ben Shapiro, Real Candace Owens, Michael Knowles, Jordan Peterson, Andrew Clavin, uh, uh, Brett Cooper, uh, aka Femme Shapiro, uh, and over the last three months have received over 200 violations. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're finally taking this seriously. It, it, the very clear terms of service which they are violating. Like, the thing I also hate about this is I have been mass flagged. My channels have been mass flagged for shit that I didn't do for like COVID misinformation or fucking hate speech or like scams and, and malpractices because they're all fucking snowflakes and they despise when you go after their daddies. And as soon as you do a couple hate response videos, all of a sudden the community is just like, oh, well, did he insulted the quartering, but the quartering fucking didn't shit himself in that Walmart hate speech, hate speech. And they manipulate the system when I'm following the fucking rules, all right? I know there's no fucking free speech in a corporation. I get that. This, it, this is a massive corporation. It's a multinational corporation. YouTube doesn't give a fuck about me. YouTube, I'm, 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 I've had my channels deleted. I know I'm an ant, all right? So I have to play by the rules, and I understand that, and I do. I play by the rules, the YouTube TOS, and none of these motherfuckers do. And they get away with this shit constantly, and then they just complain every single time this happens about fucking free speech. And, and here we have it again. Fucking Tim Pool, free speech. Oh, look, they're coming for all of us, all this kind of bullshit. Fuck that noise. But this is what J Jeremy Boring has to say. He says, last month, Matt Walsh blog was demonetized. On Friday, Candace Owens and Michael J. Knowles were suspended for seven days after receiving their second strike. And Jordan Peterson was given his first strike, three in 90 days, and your account is terminated. In the last 90 days, our accounts have received 104 violations for hateful and derogatory content, earning them. Why did my channel get deleted? So I think four years ago today, I could check whatever it is. Go to youtube.com slash the TV. I have a video on it. Um... Uh, on April Fools, my my original YouTube.com slash the Surf TV channel got deleted. Uh, I think it was either because of the Joe Rogan video or the PewDiePie video, one of the two. But the whole channel got deleted. No email, no strikes, no nothing, just gone. It, it's like you have been found in violations of the terms of service, and your channels got deleted because they figured out they can mass like I only had seven thousand subs back then. They can mass flag that shit, and they know that it's it's a 
very popular fucking tactic for the alt right and the far right when you criticize fucking if you come tangentially close to one of their fucking alt right daddies, they get so fucking snowflakery. Like it, it just fucking they fall apart, they crumble, they melt, and then they're just like, no, no, mass flag centers and scams. That's I got roasted for sense like scams and malpractices or something. They said I was doing like a phishing scam or something for one of my videos, which no, I was not. Uh, it was just mass flag, and it wasn't if it wasn't for the fucking all the lefties on the internet, my whole thing would have been taken down. But all these lefties on the internet all of a sudden were just like, no, fucking you know, uh, save the serfs, blah blah blah. Did a whole campaign. It was pretty cute. Limited monetization. Again, nearly every one of these violations comes from our coverage of the trans debate. It's unsurprising. Unsurprising. People's existence is not a debate for you. That's the problem. From the trans debate, no, that, that they want to exist and you want to ignore all fucking, every fucking major medical association in the United States. You are unscientific bigots and assholes. You are skull measurers. You are phrenologists of the modern era. Every one of you is a clown of the highest order. That's all there is to it. That's it. And, and you're just like, well, we just wanted to participate in the debate. Why won't they? Why, why, why won't they allow the marketplace of ideas? Over 25% of the U.S. population gets its news from YouTube. And the Daily Wire is one of the largest news brands in the space. Last week, our accounts had over 157 million views on YouTube. That's over 20 million views a day. Yet we are on the verge of losing access to the platform. Oh, please make that it That may be the bigger reason, Sir Jeremy. If you want this to be the greatest pride in quite some time, let's, let's, let's celebrate very near the end. Save it as like a final fucking celebration, an explosion, if you will, of gayness uh, by, by taking down the fucking Daily Wire hate network. It, it, it is a hate network. It, 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 that, it, that's what it is. It, it is a modern day hate network that is spreading unscientific medical misinformation in order to marginalize and vilify and be part of a exterminationist project to rid the world of the queers. That's what it is. That's that, and it profits handsomely off it. You, you have but to look at their own fucking <laughs> their own statements before you. Why it is they're coming after you? You're too big, dog. You're too big. You're influencing people. You're, 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 you're making, they, they have been influencing people for such a long time, Tim, that that's not, that's not news. They're, they're not just this year. They didn't just pop off in 2023. It's like, oh yeah, you know, it's pretty wild. They went from fucking like what 25,000 subs or something to, I don't know, over, over a million in, in under a year. Pretty amazing growth. If you ask me exponential, some would say. Making friends. They don't like that. Yo, the Bud Light thing is scary. Activision. This is interesting. I got to cover this later. Activision, Call of Duty, they're like putting out the pride stuff. They're doubling down over and over again. This is the craziest thing. They're doubling down. They got prominent streamers boycotting them and they're doubling down. They do not want to back off from this. They don't want to see their agenda being harmed. And Jeremy, we're talking 157 million views in a week. Wow. First time. And the Daily Wire. First time. They're like the biggest game in town, I guess. Are 157 they, I per so. week. You got to understand, the media establishment's like, we've lost control of the narrative. The Bud Light thing, all of this stuff, it's... These are not the media... This is a tech company. It's a publishing house. Yes, and a massive one. And you can make an argument that tech companies now are basically giant wings of the media. But this isn't fucking like the old... Like, you can't include this in like, oh, there's traditional media. Your CNNs, your MSNBCs, and then there's the Daily Wire. And they're like, this is an independent media tech uh, company that's amplified through a monstrously huge tech company. These are very distinct things. Probably the result of prominent individuals like Matt Walsh and Ben Shapiro. Matt Walsh. Really hitting out of the park with the documentary. Uh, it's 3.08 million subscribers on the Daily Wire. So not the biggest game in town. In fact, Russell Brand just in and of himself is, is larger. What is a woman? And sure enough, YouTube comes for you. Unsurprising. Even Twitter tried to stop. What is a woman? And Elon Musk personally intervened. We saw then the resignation of two individuals. And I have to wonder... As many people have stated, did Elon Musk go to these? Daily Wire is not anti-establishment. They're just YouTube Fox News. No, they're fucking worse. Honestly, Daily Wire is way worse than Fox News. Fox News, at least in some of their fucking divisions, have stories that aren't like completely, uh, you know, exterminationist. But like with fucking the Daily Wire, that that shit is just it, it. Think of all the Daily Wire hosts. Jordan Peterson, 
Matt Walsh, Michael Knowles. Like these are some, Ben Shapiro, these are some of the biggest transphobes in the game. Like all on the same network. It, it is like, it is like Tim's, I'm not going to downplay what Tim's saying. It is a Goliath of a fucking independent network for sure. These women and say, it doesn't mean it's the biggest. Either you resign or you're fired. I wonder, really don't know. But I think this is more than just the trans debate or the trans issue. It is the easy path for them to shut down the Daily Wire to hinder them. It won't work. YouTube is losing market share to Rumble. Every day, I see Rumble videos getting more and more traffic. And you can try and shut down videos from the Daily Wire, or in our instance, we had a full episode of IRL and one video removed. Daily, I mean, don't get me wrong. Rumble has become a monstrously successful right wing echo chamber, right to far right. Uh, it's also a cesspool of Holocaust denial. Like there's so much Holocaust denial on that fucking network. Um, so much so that like it's kind of weird sometimes. Like you'll see Netflix and I don't know if Netflix advertises ever since Media Matters pointed it out. But like back in the day when you would see like Netflix ads next to like full on Holocaust denial videos, you'd be like, oh, shit. And it just takes a couple people to point that out before brands are like, oh, OK, so I'm not touching that because they don't want that smoke. They, they don't, like to them, there's so many other places they could advertise there's so many other options to them it's very very easy for them to get way better market penetration through uh, fucking tiktok way stronger instagram way stronger way way better results way way better roi uh, so why fucking fuck with rumble if it's going to be like just a headache for them if it's just going to be like hey by the way your ads will appear next to holocaust denial videos so it's like okay well then, let's just pull the money from those rumble ads and then put them into tiktok but we don't we don't rely on you for monetization anymore you had that power and you gave it away. <laughs> I'll give some advice to YouTube. Yeah, really. I'll give them some advice. Nice. See, when you offer up monetization to the average person and they're able to make a living and run a business off of your platform, your best approach is the soft guiding force redirecting instead of hard hitting. Let me explain. If they went to the Daily Wire crew <laughs> go on <laughs> he said guys <laughs> these hard videos violate the rules don't be soft be hard we don't want to demonetize don't be hard you. we don't want to be take more these hard. videos down moving forward approach the issue in this way how often do you think that's been happening tim when people have massive accounts like this they have their own fucking liaisons there are people that jeremy boring would be speaking to yes uh, representatives from youtube who would be like okay so um you gotta dial it back I'm, I'm just being honest. You can't have people like Michael Knowles just going up on the platform on a nightly basis being like, hey, we want to eliminate transgenderism from society because, yeah, it's pretty close to genocidal rhetoric. Uh, he may be saying transgenderism, but I'm sure anyone who understands this topic at all will understand that there's no such thing as just removing someone's very existence from themselves. So much like I can't stop being cis, uh, if someone was to remove cisgenders from society, they would effectively be eliminating me. So it is eliminationist rhetoric kind of yeah pretty much not even kind of it's pretty it's pretty strict so you got to dial that back just just give mike uh you know whatever advice he needs you know maybe remind him of the good old days when he used to be uh, a gay character in most of the media that he performed in uh and, and bring that up or, or when he used to do drag you can talk about that too and that's also something you could bring up um but just dial him back you know you got your matt walsh's on there he's like he's putting people's addresses uh, out there in the open and I, you could say it's publicly available information sure but he, those same people are getting like death threats like directly like they're being interviewed by vice and then those people are saying hey by the way i got death th 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 there was bomb threats multiple bomb threats at the hospital you could dial it back just i'm just saying it doesn't have to be quite as intense as it is now you'll still make as many like views and money you don't you just don't have to go this hard and we're we're totally cool asking him ross Guess you know, what? shit daily wire would have been like all right, fine. We can make our arguments, but it has to be delivered in a more academic approach or something to that effect. Then the power and the soft power would, would hold. This is, this is what we saw with, uh, with Patreon and other platforms when they started banning people. I told these CEOs, you realize when you control the flow of revenue to these individuals, you have power over them. And if you want a desired outcome, you utilize that power. The threat of the removal is more powerful than the removal itself. If you ban them, they will find another way to maximize their voice. If you negotiate with them, you will diminish the arguments you don't like. And why, why do you think this is all happening, Tim? 
Over 25% of the U.S. population gets news from YouTube, all the views and our discussion. Over the last 90 days, our accounts received 104 violations for hateful and derogatory content. 104 violations. Do you, do you, do you think that I can receive 104 violations on, on my channels? No. No, I can receive three and they're gone. <laughs> they don't exist. I don't get 104 violations over a, a network of different shows across a very vast fucking collection of internet websites. Earning them limited monetization. That's 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 what we call a half measure. See, they're already doing that. They're already doing what you're asking for. Earning them limited monetization. Again, nearly every one of these violations comes from our coverage of the trans debate. You keep seeing coverage of the trans debate, aka you're being transphobic on main. So they're violating a lot of their hateful and derogatory rules, which I will completely agree with. I would say, if anything, that they've been getting away with this for a very, very long time. And now YouTube's just meeting them halfway, being like, we kind of got you. We understand. You know, uh, th this is not what we're about either. So let's let's compromise here, everybody. You got lots of views. You give us lots of fucking lots of ad revenue. You that, and you'll keep you'll keep them in your in your reins. That's what they're I doing. I know a lot here. of people listening are probably that's saying, what no, the first one is. Banned. You have now it on they'll go to right Rumble. Now, now, they'll go, now they, they're already on Twitter. They're not banned. And Twitter they're is a massive political platform anyway. You've got the you've got the text on screen, Tim. Are you not going to read this? Are you, did you understand what you're showing everyone right now? <laughs> Where a lot of people get their news from. It's their news feeds. And perhaps YouTube made the biggest mistake they could have made. The money that the Daily Wire makes is from memberships. They make a lot of money off YouTube, don't get me wrong, but the bulk of it is memberships. I'm willing to bet the YouTube stuff is, I don't know, 15 to 20% of their revenue. Because their website, their podcasts, I got to tell you, their podcasts probably make substantially more. Yo, the probably. returns from the podcast that, that I get, yo, YouTube yo. doesn't compare this is the crazy thing <laughs> the uh the podcasts versions of our shows get a fraction around 20 percent of the views do i use Streamlabs? no i use obs because obs uh in its purest form not only is open source software but it also just runs way fucking faster but they make comparable Yo. revenue it's crazy because for like, podcasts Yo. revenue is just so much better so much better so youtube is is destroying itself and so be it. Let them do it. They're not smart enough to understand. That's what I'm saying. You go to the Daily Wire and you say, hey, guys, you know, these these videos break our rules. We're you know what's wild, though, is the Daily Wire. It's a good example of like a whole bunch of corporate polish being added to fucking very extremist bigotry. Like Matt Walsh, he's an extremist. Uh, Michael Knowles, he's also an extremist. Michael Knowles is the one who said out loud that he wants to eliminate transgenderism from society. These are extremists. And so they put a very, very nice polish upon everything. Very professionally made, you know, uh, Adobe, uh, not Premiere, um, After Effects. Fucking After Effects, uh, full motion video, very nice graphics sometimes, you know, uh, just comprising of all these different digital effects and stuff like it looks very nice and polished it's well mixed it's well shot it's got very expensive cameras the whole thing feels closer to a television network than it does to an internet network and and that's with purpose because that's one of the reasons why they've been allowed to do the kind of extremist rhetoric that they do if the shit that like was being said by michael knowles was coming out of the mouth of just some fucking you know 700 uh fucking sub andy who's just like you know i hate trans people uh the show well then yeah that person probably would get uh, roasted a lot quicker than, than this monstrously huge network. We're not going to take them down. Instead of uh, uh, saying it this way or this way, say it this way and this way. And then you know what, you, you know what would happen? You're going to have a co-CEO of, uh, of Daily Wire, Jeremy Boring, and the hosts being like, we're going to lose $10 million or we can just lighten, lighten the way we, we say what, exactly the same thing. You see what I'm saying? Uh, let me try to explain it this way. I always tell the people who come on Timcast IRL, YouTube has rules. We don't have rules. We, we seriously don't. If you say something awful, I'll argue with you. Like, this is the point of the debate. My recommendation, however, is to make your arguments academic and not invective. Don't call someone a name. Explain. And so the best... Kind of funny, because he spent most of that debate, at least in the second half of it, just name calling me. <laughs> I love how when I was watching other people review it, like when I was watching Demon Mama's review or whatever, she was just like, Lance hasn't called Tim Pool a single fucking name this whole time. Tim Pool has called him a cult member, a groomer, a pedophile, a pedophile enabler. <laughs> me meanwhile, I'm like, well, actually, if we look at academic studies and sources on this topic, it's like, you know what I think?
I think you're in a cult. I think you're in a cult of groomers. <laughs> Example of this was when we had Milo Yiannopoulos on, and he made what may be one of the greatest, and it's it fairly insulting, but well put. Instead of just calling Ron DeSantis a name, which I think would be rather ineffective, but it feels good, especially to people who aren't fans. Hmm. He, he said, when I told him, like, you know, try and keep it academic. He, he, he said that Ron DeSantis has the charisma of something off-putting, like when you're trying to reach for something and you accidentally touch something moist, like a wet sponge. And mm. it was one of the funniest ways to describe how he felt about Ron DeSantis in a way that was funny and less insulting, as it were. That's the point I'm trying to make about YouTube. Not that I'm saying that anyone at the Daily Wire should or that I know for sure they, they, they would or should change the way they deliver their message. It turns out, uh, as they've said, one of the reasons that they've had their videos removed is because they refer to males as men and females as women. They've done it enough times. In that instance, it does seem like this is more so about silence. By the way, because uh, a lot of the arguments on the right are so deeply unscientific at this point, to the point of just like, you know, clown choosery, they need to continuously try and reframe and recontextualize everything to make it seem as if you, uh, you are falsely wrong, right? So, no, 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 we're the rational ones. We're just trying to call women, women, and men, men. What's wrong with that, right? I, I, I'm i just saying, leave kids alone. Leave children alone. Is that is that a controversial statement? If that is a controversial statement, I want to know why you find that controversial. Do you not want to leave kids alone? And do you not think women are women or men are men? I'm just I'm just trying to get a, a feel for what's going on here. Like it, It's all part of a tactic. It, it's all intentional. It's, it's all to make everyone end that. You have to get defensive at that point, right? You're like, no, I do believe that women are women. Oh, okay. So why are you saying that trans women are women? Because trans women are women. But they're not, are they? No, they are, actually. And then and so forth. And the dance of life continue. A prominent conservative network. And, and yeah, that's the thing. Yes, of course. I agree. Leave kids alone. Leave kids alone to be who they are. Leave kids alone to be fucking. Uh, if a kid is born gay, leave him the fuck alone. If a kid is born fucking any kind of queer, leave him the fuck alone. Let, let, let him explore uh, and learn about that kind of stuff on his own terms and not be fucking vilified by a bunch of weirdo fucking bigots on the Internet. An election begins to approach. And I have to wonder if it's because they're big for Ron DeSantis, not as a company or anything like that. But many of the personalities very much favor the guy. Maybe Ron DeSantis really is the path forward and the machine is terrified of it. Or maybe Ron the DeSantis machine. is backed by a bunch of the same establishment neocon people and a Trojan horse. I don't know. Th those are like the prevailing thoughts, though. Me, I'm just some dude complaining on the Internet and I got no idea. I can just tell you how we do things and what I see. And uh, it looks like they're coming for the Daily Wire. They're coming for, for, for Tucker Carlson. Fox News uh, sent him a cease and desist. It's not going to be easy. With Activision, with Bud Light, with Target, with Kohl's, with North Face, with all these big boycotts and the stock dropping. Yeah, victory is right before us. <laughs> the culture is shifting and people are getting fed up, but he's so wrong, by the way. The best part about all this is like, so I, I looked it up because I know Tim Pool's like the majority of Americans do not agree with this flag. That is why the flag is divisive in the White House. Uh, no, actually, the majority of Americans now don't oppo oppose gay marriage. There's been a, a fucking cataclysmic shift in that. Uh, the closest you get is that Americans are divided on issues of when it comes to the trans question, which is why they hyper focus on it all the time, because it's the only winning fucking issue that they can try and wedge themselves into uh, when it comes to this kind and bigotry, especially when they're going after the entirety of the rainbow. Um, but yeah, no, the majority of Americans don't have hate in their heart. These are a, a very vocal minority of very heavily funded fucking pundits and a very vast network of fucking Christian fascists, Christian nationalists who are funding all of this kind of shit, amplifying their voices and making them seem big loud. But then you look at the numbers that like, look at uh, what Alejandra Caraballo just uh, posted on uh, Twitter. Her engagement in many ways, even with a much smaller by the numbers account than a lot of these Goliaths, your Tim Pools, your Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson has like four million fucking followers on, on Twitter and does not get anywhere near the same kind of response sometimes because at the end of the day, people are sharing fucking other people's activism. People are uniting together in a digital forum to retweet, quote tweet, to fucking share uh, fucking tweets of shit that they believe in and overwhelmingly it seems like a lot more a vast majority of them do not hate queer folk they actually love queer people and that's the, the the harsh reality that a lot of them have to deal with so they have to continuously pat themselves on the back and be like but we're winning right aren't aren't we winning we're defeating the defeating the baddies we're, we're doing a good job we're, we're defeating all of them yeah do you enjoy the surfs but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs many are saying this well we've got the solution for you it's the Surf Times in podcast form. Available on most major podcasting networks now. 
If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free, just like the podcast. Thank you kindly to our Lord and Saviors, Peyton L. Just and Xander Corvus. Without you, we are nothing. And now, a shout out to our Knights of the Square table. Amazing Flesh, Anna Loves Riley, Adrian McCarthy, DM Rivera, Doug Cady, Everything Important, Hegbard Celine, Izzy Solidarity, La Media Panza, Matthew Scarborough, Multimondi, Nettle, Omni, Peanut Butter Blonde, Political Papi, Quiet185, Rachel K, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Kubi, Sir Nickus, Spinach Monster, Stellar Vision, Sebastian Demmel, Thomas, Trevbot EXE, Lucidry, Words Greenwood, Shell Alvarez, Tony Perkins, Thomas, Opecker, Travis McClinton, and Victoria Bell. Thank you so much. And a huge shout out to all the other people who make this entire show possible. Without you, it would not exist. If you can support us, please go to patreon.com slash the surfs, and even $1 can help unlock all of the little goodies and help make this show entirely possible. 